Uh, could we, let's see, could we now uh, have uh, Dr. Uh, Greer uh, take 10 minutes? Thank you very much. I appreciate being here again. Uh, I would like to open with sort of a historical overview of advanced technologies that began in the late 1800s uh, with the breakthroughs with Maxwell and also Faraday. It turns out that the Maxwell equations that were developed had a number of changes that resulted in what is now classic electromagnetic theory. Uh, this has resulted in a number of errors uh, in the equations, which are, have been corrected by people who have looked at them very carefully. Between the late 1800s and 1929, there were a number of breakthroughs that ended up uh, being suppressed that had to do with creating very high voltage VHV systems so that you could create a vector into what's now been called the zero point energy field. And I refer the panel to the uh, Jane's Defense Weekly writer, uh, Nick uh, Cook, and his book, uh, The Hunt for Zero Point. Uh, this uh, began to be uh, explored by people like Nikola Tesla and others. I have a Department of Defense uh, document that has, is on a flash drive for each member of Congress that the conference has been given, the citizens' hearings has been given, that shows that when Nikola Tesla died, that this information that he had, uh, which allowed for a car to run out of the ambient energy, uh, was uh, in documents confiscated by the FBI. And I have a doc Department of Defense document demanding that the FBI turn these over to the DOD. The FBI refused. At any rate, science continues because the laws of the universe are in fact universal. And they can be discovered here or around Alpha Centauri or any place else in the cosmos. By 1928 and 29, T. Townsend Brown, as well as the Kolosky Frost experiment in physics in Germany, had determined that VHV, very high voltage systems, done in a certain resonant field, could result in so called electromagnetogravitic effect, the lifter effect that has been described, which you see in UFOs. They also can create what's called a space-time bubble around an object so that you can correct for 1G. This is how these objects are traveling at multiples of what any aerodynamic uh, physics would describe and can make right-hand turns without killing the occupants. Around this same time, there was in the 1940s and the late 1930s a number of UFO sightings. This included the so-called Foo Fighters. Yes, it's a famous rock group. However, the Foo Fighters took their name from the reports of these objects seen in the theater of World War II that were flying around our aircraft. We thought it was a secret weapon of the Nazis. The Nazis thought it was a secret weapon of ours. Uh, there is Jimmy Doolittle, the famous general. His nephew is a dear friend of mine, and he has testified that General Doolittle was sent by FDR over to the European theater in World War II, investigated the Foo Fighters, and came back and told Roosevelt, and I quote, they are interplanetary vehicles. So by then, there began a classified program, uh, and which was augmented further by events, as mentioned, in 1941, and then, of course, the famous Roswell event. Those events led to, as Philip Corso describes, a reverse engineering program. As you all know from the famous Wilbur Smith document of 1951 from Canada, it talks about that flying saucers exist, but there's a high-level team headed up by Dr. Vannevar Bush that is studying the, quote, motus operandi of these vehicles. These were the most brilliant scientists, Edward Teller, Oppenheimer, and others, Herman Oberth, amongst others, who were in this team studying how uh, extraterrestrial vehicles move. In October of 1954, a key date I want the committee to remember, we have actionable intelligence from someone who has worked in the National Security Agency and has been in the vault. All of this went deep black because they figured out, at that point, gravity control. So since 1954, October of that year, we have not needed rockets, jets, internal combustion engines, and surface roadways between cities. I say this with authority that this is the case. Eventually, these breakthroughs in human discovery were complemented by the study of 
the extraterrestrial material that were retrieved from these events. And contrary to most people's thoughts, the Roswell event was actually a, a downing of an extraterrestrial vehicle by a electromagnetic system that was hidden in a radar dome that was switched on. And this is in an FBI document that I can provide for the committee and is on the flash drive given to the Congress. Uh, the result ultimately was that there were transdimensional physics that began to be studied that deal with the nexus between electromagnetism, energy generation, anti-gravity, and consciousness. And we have discovered that there is a nexus and that, in fact, there are electromagnetic systems that have been developed that can interface directly with what we call coherent thought, the same way that you can interface with uh, a system with lasers, which is coherent light, where you sync up all the wavelengths. Ultimately, this, uh, these breakthroughs were paralleled with uh, amazing developments in the biological sciences uh, and the experimentation with cloning. And this began many years earlier than was reported from Dolly uh, the sheep in Scotland. This goes a little beyond, I think, what this committee wants to look into. However, you need to understand that the technologies that we have and we are discussing are not theoretical. We have actionable intelligence that any committee in Congress or executive action can find regarding current operations. And I just want to go through a list of them very quickly of these facilities and corporations for which we have witnesses who uh, can be subpoenaed by the committees of the Congress. Uh, this was developed at the request of Congressman Christopher Cox of Orange County, and, with whom I met, and was later de further developed for uh, the briefing for, that we put together for President Obama. These facilities are the Edwards Air Force Base and subsections where, uh, at the uh, dry lake bed where the Lockheed uh, Skunk Works operations, Haystack Butte, China Lakes, George Air Force Base, and the closed Norton Air Force Base where an anti-gravity device, so-called alien reproduction vehicle, for which we have the schematics, was seen by Frank Carlucci and others on our witness team. Uh, tabletop Mountain and Blackjack Control. Uh, the aerospace facilities there are the Northrop Anthill Facility, Tihon Ranch, the McDonnell Douglas Lano Plant, Lockheed Martin Hellendale Plant, and the Phillips Lab. At the Nellis Air Force facility, so-called Area 51, no one calls it that. There's S-4 and S-12, Pahoot Mesa, Groom Lake, and a num number of sub-facilities. The most important facility is in Utah, near Provo, the Dugway Proving Grounds, all of which is underground and the airspace above it is classified. There are no roads into this facility. The New Mexico facilities include Los Alamos National Labs with underground connectors to the so-called Dulce area where the biological work is being done, and Kirtland Air Force Base. And the complex there includes Sandia National Laboratories, Phillips Labs, Manzano Met Mountain Weapon Storage Facility, Coyote Canyon, and the White Sands Complex. In Arizona, near Fort Huachuca, which is Army Intelligence Headquarters, there is a UGB underground base where one of our witnesses, who will testify, worked on nine separate extraterrestrial vehicles that had been downed through advanced electromagnetic pulse weapons. And there are several different species of extraterrestrial biologicals stored at that facility. The other facilities, and this goes on, uh, include the sh uh, a special compartmented area of Cheyenne Mountain, where we have witnesses in our team who can be subpoenaed uh, where that we have tracked extraterrestrial vehicles in our solar system that we're measuring 26 miles in diameter. Uh, there are also uh, facilities in Australia, a key one being Pine Gap, the so-called Alice Springs facility, which is mostly a U.S. Air Force facility, even though it is in Australia. Um, I recently talked to the Deputy Prime Minister of Australia about this. Uh, also, the Redstone Arsenal and the Marshall Space Flight Center we have a scientist at the Redstone Arsenal under, who works under contract for IT&T who have developed these transdimensional systems. He was under contract with my project to bring these energy devices out, and he was then threatened by a former CIA director and what I call the goon squad that went down there three years ago in March. 
This is just part of the information we have, and this information is on the flash drive given to Stephen Bassett's staff, then that you're all welcome to review. Thank you. Thank you. Well, 